Model steam engines and boilers part 20. This episode shows the use of JB Weld epoxy resin to modify a main bearing top cap that was too small. The video also shows one of the methods that I use to machine a large flywheel in the lathe. The engine that I'm working on in this video is one that I just bought back from the customer who I sold it to and it ended up being a really good example of a Stuart 5A steam engine. The series is called How to Rebuild a Stuart Models 5A Steam Engine and it runs for 32 episodes. This particular video contains extracts from just two of the episodes and they really are very heavily edited, especially the sequence about machining the flywheel. One of the top caps is smaller than the other. Both of these top caps are very substantial castings and even the thinner one of the two has more than enough strength to hold the bearings in place. A while back many viewers were recommending this stuff, it's called JB Weld. JB Weld is an American product and it really is good. I would say that there's a place for this stuff in every workshop. I'm going to use it in conjunction with a couple of pieces of sheet metal to make the thinner of the two top caps the same width as the other one. And this job starts by marking out the sheet metal. Just holding the sheet metal against the top cap and scribing it with a needle file. And after marking out the pieces of sheet metal, I'm going to cut them to size on the bandsaw and then finish them off by using the one inch belt sander followed by a small drum sander like this one. It's most important to clean up the parts that you're going to stick with this JB Weld. JB Weld is two part epoxy resin. You mix the two together in equal amounts and they go really hard. But there's a difference. One of the tubes has metal particles in with the resin. You've just been watching me roughening up the part to make a good key for the resin. And now it's time to mix the two parts together. There's a little bit of urgency when you mix 5 minute epoxy resin, but this is the 24 hour version. So there's really no rush, you can take your time, mix it thoroughly and then apply it to the parts. A quick health and safety warning, always read the directions on the pack and when you finish using this sort of stuff or any chemicals, wash your hands thoroughly, preferably twice. The front of the sole plate casting was a bit rough and I used some JB Weld to skin this and once it was rubbed down, and it rubs down beautifully, it looks really good. There's going to be a lot of painting coming up soon. Here are the rough castings for the box bed and the flywheel just as I got them out of the box. My brain has a bit of a problem with flywheels. No matter how many times I clean up the part, I find some that I've missed. So I'm taking no chances with this flywheel. I'm being very thorough and I'm going over every part of it twice. And it's the same when I paint a flywheel. I can never paint a flywheel in one go. No matter what I do, I miss parts. I paint it, I put it on one side, I wait for the paint to dry, and then I look, and there are parts where I haven't painted. So, I do it again. And usually after the second coat, all of the surfaces are covered in paint. This flywheel is going to be machined on the inside edge of this part I'm currently grinding away. I would always machine a flywheel this way in a four-jaw chuck because I can get it to run exactly how I want it to run. And don't forget, the part of the casting that I need to be concentric is the inner part where the spokes start, not the outer part. That's a very rough piece of casting. Some people use a faceplate, but I've never had a faceplate. I don't even know what to do with one, really. None of the lathes I've ever had in my life have had faceplates. Oh, no, I tell a lie, one of them did but it was the wrong faceplate and didn't fit it. If you're watching this clip very closely, you will have noticed that the lathe tool was near the edge of the flywheel before I started turning it. And once again, I'm double checking, because having a lathe tool, not touching the flywheel, but very close to it, tells me whether the flywheel's in the middle, and it's a good reference point. And now I'm getting somewhere. This is running quite true. So I think I'm okay to start the cutting procedure. And now it's time to start turning the outside edge. And this is running very slowly. I know it's not on this clip, it's speeded up. But you need to do this very, very slowly because the speed on the outside edge of a flywheel this size is quite fast. These are carbide tip tools, so blunting the tool isn't a massive issue. But if you turn the flywheel too fast, you'll get a very strange finish on the work and sometimes chatter marks. 
That's as far as I can cut because the jaws are in the way. So it's now time to turn the flywheel round in the chuck and machine the other side. The process is identical, facing across the front of the boss, changing the tool to go down the side of the boss, being very careful not to go too far and hit the spoked area. To get through the surface skin of the casting, I had to take slightly more metal off this side, so we'll have to match this on the other boss. When I get to the end of this machining operation, I will take note of the size of it and duplicate this on the other side. Just in case you're wondering, when do I drill the hole down the middle? Well, we're getting close to that. The first thing I do is drill a centre hole, and then I use a live centre to support the centre of the flywheel while I turn the outer edges. This is not absolutely essential, but it ensures that the flywheel is held firmly in position. And once again, using the boring bar, I'm cleaning up the inside edge of the outer part of the flywheel. By the way, whilst I had the boring bar in the tool post, not only did I clean up the inside edge, I cleaned up the front face as well. Like a lot of sand castings, this flywheel was quite uneven. Half of it was okay, and the other half was a little bit rough. But the left hand knife tool made short work of that, but it didn't give a very good finish. So I use this, this is a round nose tool, and I find these really good for cast iron. You get a good finish, you don't get a line finish. When you look at the full size, there are lots of lines. And these lines are caused by a very small lathe tool, cutting the metal of maybe a 32 ton flywheel. So it's a very small lathe tool and a very large item. You can get grooves on these if you use a point tool, but it doesn't look so good on a model. I'm going to polish this up. This is a second operation with the boring bar. Initially, I just used the boring bar to clean up this inside surface, and now I'm using it properly to get a good finish. I need to make a hole 5 8 of an inch in diameter in the centre of the flywheel, and this must be very, very accurate. So I'm not just drilling it with a 5 8 drill, this is a 39 64 drill. Yes, it's a bit of a bizarre size. The idea of this is it's just small enough or large enough to make it so that a reamer will follow it through and size the hole to 5 eighths of an inch. First of all you go through with the 39 64 drill as I've just mentioned and then you use the reamer. But the secret is run the lathe very slowly. And if you do it like this it will fit on your crankshaft with no shake whatsoever. So once again the rule is drill the hole ever so slightly under the finished size. You could even bore it with a boring bar. Then run the lathe very slowly and feed in a reamer of the size that you require. All that remains to be done, apart from painting the flywheel, is to cut the keyway. And I'll show you how to do that in another episode. But that's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.